The Expedition 36 crew on board the International Space Station has spent a week concentrating on a lot of laboratory science in a range of disciplines, all while taking care of the station and setting up for the going and coming of Russian cargo ships. On Monday, Commander Pavel Vinogradov began with the evaluation of his cardiovascular function during a series of progressively more strenuous exercises conducted on a stationary bicycle. That information is added to the studies that have been ongoing for some time, providing more data for scientists who are looking at the ways the human body is affected being in a weightless environment for an extended period. They're trying to find ways to counteract the bad effects so future explorers can stay healthy on longer missions. Uh, Vinogradov also spent time Monday then stowing items into the Progress 50 spacecraft in advance of its undocking on Thursday. Flight engineer Alexander Mazurkin spent part of his Monday on routine maintenance tasks in the Russian segment of the station, and the afternoon working along with flight engineer Fyodor Yurchikin on a Russian experiment that's looking into new ways to identify the sources of depressurization inside a pressurized vehicle. The Russian crew members worked on that experiment, known as BAR, uh, throughout most of the days of the week. Flight engineer Karen Nyberg started the week with Robonaut operations. She set up the R2 robot and the teleoperations equipment in the Destiny module, monitoring the commanding of tasks from the ground and directing the robot's actions with her own motions through the use of the instrumented gloves and goggles. The Robonaut is a test bed for evolving robotic operations in space. It is demonstrating what a robot can do and helping developers as they test the boundaries of what a robot might do in the future, including helping the human crew with tasks inside the station, perhaps someday outside the station as well. Flight engineer Luca Parmitano spent a good portion of his Monday in the European Space Agency's Columbus Laboratory reinstalling the microscope and spectrophotometer in the bio lab, which had been removed for refurbishment back in 2011. This is the start of biolab maintenance in advance of some advanced uh, extended ground testing and commissioning to demonstrate that facility's ability to support some upcoming experiments looking into the effects of microgravity on biological organisms. Flight engineer Chris Cassidy set up the fluids integration rack for a physical sciences investigation called Advanced Colloids Experiment. It is the first in a series of microscopic imaging investigations of materials that contain colloidal particles. The investigators are looking into the flow characteristics and the ordering effects of those materials. On Tuesday, Vinogradov and Yurchikin completed their refresher training on the Toru system. That's the system that allows a cosmonaut located in the Zvezda module to take over manual control of an approaching progress cargo ship that training in advance of the departure of 50P and the expected arrival of a new load of supplies that are targeted for launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome on Saturday. Cassidy focused his maintenance attentions Tuesday on the science hardware, working on the Marangonia apparatus in the Kibo Laboratory. That's an experiment into Marangoni convection that's designed to learn about heat transfer in microgravity. Parmitano took care of station maintenance that day, too, including a routine inspection of the portable fire extinguishers and breathing apparatuses. He did that in the morning. He also took time to uh, speak with officials of the European space industries. They were all gathered at the uh, Altec Center in Italy to uh, talk with him about the progress of his flight. The science started off the day for Parmitano on Wednesday as he uh, initialized samples for runs in the binary colloidal alloy test experiment, while Karen Nyberg gathered up hardware and installed the centerline berthing camera in the window of the nadir hatch of Node 2. That's to support next month's arrival of the next H2 transfer vehicle. Then she joined with Parmitano and Cassidy for a conference with the spacewalk specialists in Houston as they reviewed the procedures for the next round of inspections designed to try to isolate the cause of last week's malfunction that allowed water to leak into Parmitano's helmet during a spacewalk. The hatch to the progress vehicle attached to the piers module was closed on Wednesday morning, 
And on Thursday, Vinogradov and Yurchikin had a conference with the team in Moscow to review procedures that they would follow in the event there was an issue, and crew members had to take over manual control to redock that vehicle. But there were no such issues, and 50P departed the space station on time on Thursday afternoon and was deorbited above the Pacific Ocean Thursday evening. Parmitano spent his Thursday morning in the combustion integrated rack, installing some new hardware components in the multi-user droplet combustion apparatus. That's in anticipation of the next set of combustion experiments. There are a few of those such experiments on board, all dedicated to learning the details about how different fuels burn when there's no gravity around. That's designed to improve fire safety as well as fire suppression techniques, but also to learn more about the efficiency of engines which use liquid fuels. Nyberg devoted part of her Thursday to preparing for next month's arrival of the H2 transfer vehicle by checking out the HTV hardware control panel and then reviewing the procedures that she'll follow when she flies Canadarm2 to grapple HTV and berth it to the station's harmony module. Later on, she joined Cassidy. The two of them talked about their mission in interviews with the Washington Post and the Portland, Maine Press Herald, the newspaper in Cassidy's home state. On Friday, the U.S. segment crew members concentrated on a number of maintenance tasks that included troubleshooting of the spacesuit Parmitano wore last week and which leaked water into his helmet. There were no obvious indications of the source of the problem that turned up yet. And Parmitano prepared to command a robot on the ground in California. That's part of the surface telerobotics investigation, looking into how the human crew on board an orbiting vehicle can command robots, which are hundreds or even thousands of miles away on the surface of a planet or asteroid or the moon, in order to have those robots perform tasks that will help the people explore those places. The station's Russian crew members were all off duty on Friday, since they'll be working all day Saturday to support the arrival of the new Progress vehicle. 52 Progress is to launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome at 3.45 p.m. Saturday Houston time and dock to the station's Piers module less than six hours, just before 9.30 p.m. the same day.